Hello and welcome to CAD time, or at least the first version of it. One thing I started doing mid last year is keeping all my ideas in a small portable notebook. I found that I had a lot of random things pop up, things I should make. I wanted a way to take them out of here and put them somewhere where I wouldn't forget and could come back to. Those ideas tend to stay in here, which this year that's something I want to change. So for the sake of making more in 2024 and improving my CAD skills, I thought I would share my workflow. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not the most experienced CAD person. There's a lot of knowledge that I lack. These will be more casual videos where I kind of just sit down and screen record while I 3D model and bring you along for the thought process, some of the math, some of the design, and hopefully in the future we'll move to woodworking, metal forming, CNC, things like that. But for now, a lot of it will be CAD 3D printing. Hope you guys enjoy. So for this episode of CAD time, we'll be doing something that honestly kind of doesn't make sense, but hear me out. These are my everyday shoes. They're just platform converse. And these shoes, I've had them for about a year and a half, maybe. And they made me realize one major thing with products nowadays is that they're not built to last or at least not made how they used to be. I've had Converse that lasted years and the laces never, never tore like this. Do you see that? I was tying my shoe one day and I pulled the lace too hard and it shredded. And both of my shoes are like this. Now, out of curiosity, I wanted to see how bad 3D printed laces would be. Just curious. Would they last longer? Would they be more comfortable since there's stretch? How can I 3D print a long piece of TPU that's the length of a shoelace on one print bed? This video will just capture the CAD portion of it and I'll probably make another video if they work out. But this is the outcome of the print. It actually did work out how I thought it would coming off of the build plate. So there's that. Anyway, enjoy the CAD and feel free to CAD along with me if you want to learn more about Onshape and improve your skills too. I'm not entirely sure how to approach modeling this and how to print them. I figured like we can make some kind of spiral or something and then extrude it and print it on its side. Do you know those curly laces too? Like I know, what are they called? Curly elastic shoe laces. I used to have these as a kid, the ones where you don't have to tie them. These things. I'm genuinely curious if we print a TPU spring, if I could use it as a shoelace, like how strong that would be. Hmm. If I print it this close together and... Okay, I put together some sketches to kind of give you a better idea, but imagine an upright spiral. When you slice through the spiral and look at it as a side view, it's just essentially a stack of circles on top of each other. The way that I think this could be printed is by 3D modeling the spiral to be completely fused together when it prints. But the fact that each consecutive circle, when you look at the side view, is barely joined to the next one through one layer. After printing, you'd be able to pull the print apart to create a spring, almost like a print in place mechanism where you take it off the build plate and you crack the hinges and now it works but with the idea that each curl of the spiral is only held together to the next curl of the spiral by one print layer that's as thick as the nozzle diameter so you would be able to pull it apart since the bonding forces aren't too strong and if you couldn't pull it apart you'd be able to just guide an exacto knife to separate the concentric passes of the printed spiral maybe that would work maybe not but for this video we just looked at a flat shoelace let me know what your thoughts are down below on that cad challenge a 3d printed spring one thing i guess we should start by figuring out is how long is an average shoelace. Okay, 114 centimeters. Now, I'm not gonna print this on the bamboo, on my X1 Carbon, because it's really not good with TPU. So, if that's my limitation, I'm going to make my spiral will be no larger than 210. So I can start with a circle. Okay, so I watched this one video on how to get a spiral. And I tried this before, but basically you make a cone, then you draw a helix on the cone, 
and on shape and then you make a sketch and you project the helix onto the plane below or above so that you get a spiral okay shoelace try one so we'll go front view start a sketch in front so if my diameter is 210 my radius is 105 I don't think it really matters how tall you make your cone. How big should I make the center? I think I want to do 50. What is 50 looking like? Oh, too much, maybe. Close this up. Okay, now we will revolve this. So then we should be able to make a helix. Helix on this surface. So now we have to do a little bit of math to which we kind of guess how many turns I'm going to need to get close enough to the average length of a shoelace, which is 114 centimeters. I can technically print the shoelace in multiple pieces and then fuse it together, but I'm worried that it will tear where I fuse it. Also, I'm not sure if we're even going to be able to tie these shoelaces. We might need to make like a belt buckle or some type of deal for closing it on the shoe. My outside diameter is 210 millimeters, which means what is the circumference of that circle? Okay, so diameter times pi. So 210, that gives us 65973. Considering when you look at the helix, you decrease your diameter of the circle as you move in. Um, I'm thinking like three or four turns should be long enough and if it's too long we can just cut it. I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom and use this project tool and basically grab the spiral. Did that work? Yes. So when I'm done I should be able to maybe hide this part and suppress the helix and we have this. I'm wondering, can I figure out the length of this? Let's see, length of a curve and on shape. Oh. Tell me there's no function. Length of a curve. So I'm not sure what that is going to be, but lucky for me, the end of the curve is right where this plane is. A new sketch on this perpendicular plane so that I can go in and actually create the cross section of my shoelace. Um, what is the thickness of shoelace? Thickness of a shoelace. I could have definitely just went and gotten my shoelace to measure it. Okay, let's just, do we ask ChatGPT? What will it tell us? Like a width of six is good and maybe a thickness of two. If I, project this point there we go so we said two millimeters this way and six millimeters that way and now what i would like to do is sweep this geometry along this path so this will be our shoelace i'm curious after printing how long it will actually end up and because it's a flexible filament, what I'm hoping will happen is that when we take it off the build plate, we're able to pull it out straight. It shouldn't be curved. Like for example, when I was trying to make tricolored filament, I 3D printed it in a spiral like this, but because it's like very stiff material, it kept this helix, this coil. Two things what I want to do, I think I'm going to chamfer these corners and these ones so that it's kind of a point at the start and end easier to thread it through the eyelets on my shoe so let's hit chamfer and figure out here and here okay I think I can get behind this it's pretty good one other thing I think I would like to try is putting a fillet it's really not necessary but I want to let's see if it'll scream at me because I also want to select these edges and I want to increase it to maybe one. It's gonna hate that. How about half a millimeter? Okay, it liked that. And this is what will be our shoelace. So I'm only gonna print one of these. Let's export it and see how long it will take to print on Prusa Slicer. Actually, I'll slice in Kira for the TPU settings. Okay, shoelace helix. Try one. I'm curious if this will actually work. One thing we might need to design is, like I mentioned before, a clasp for the lace. I'm curious if I'll be able to tie it. Okay. TPU, I think I want to do 
100 percent it's just gonna take forever to print okay one thing i noticed about printing in tpu is that when you do concentric passes like this it tends to delaminate here like between wall layers which i find super odd even when i print it at a higher temperature it still does that i honestly wonder if it's just because my tpu has absorbed too much moisture honestly it's probably that so i think what i want to see if i can do is decrease from two walls to one and then change the infill to make sure that it is zigzag and not lines or concentric yeah wall line count okay i'll start with one and see if we get any zigzag okay this is better it does also take way longer to print which you know as you'd assume you can kind of also tell that those fillets were literally useless i don't even think you can really even tell that they're there it's in 40 minutes i'm going to go ahead and try and print this and see what happens. Here's a summary of the settings I changed in CuraSlicer to print the shoelace. And here's the outcome, just a few clips of me removing the part off the bed, threading it into the shoe eyelets, and then wearing it. I wore these shoes out and about into the gym, and the shoelace makes my converse feel very secure on my foot. The shoelaces are very flexible and they're comfortable when I wear them. I printed the shoelace at six millimeters thick, which just barely passed passes through the eyelets. It's almost a little too thick for the next shoelace. I'm thinking I'll make it either four or five millimeters, but definitely less than six so that it doesn't require so much force pulling tugging to not only lace up my shoe, but loosen it. Considering the thickness issue I just mentioned, it's a little bit annoying to put my shoes on and off, but how secure my shoes feel on my foot, even without tying the lace, I think it's worth the hassle. Obviously I'll need to wear the laces longer and see how how long they'll actually last. They don't look too bad. I will probably hit the laces with a heat gun again because the TPU still looks a little bit stringy, but overall this experiment was a pretty decent success. I still need to design a tying or closing mechanism. Thank you for joining me for the first CAD time. I hope to do more of these in the future. Let me know down below what you thought and if you have any ideas you'd like to see me work on. I think I laced them too tight. That's not bad. They look like, they look like zip ties. Which is kind of funny.